Hi, and welcome to this section of the Calculus Derivative Tutor. And uh, this section, we're going to switch gears a little bit, and we're going to talk about how to take the derivatives of the trigonometric functions. Uh, if you haven't already figured it out, trig and calculus go hand in hand. And I'll tell you, after doing this for many years, the most common reason why people uh, really have problems with calculus, number one, is if they're uh, weak in algebra. And the second most common reason is if they're weak in trigonometry. Because, you know, trig is really so prevalent throughout calculus. You're constantly using sine, you're constantly using cotangent and cosine. Uh, definitely in calculus one, even more in calculus two, um, that you just have to be good at it. And that's why I created the trigonometry and pre-calculus tutor to help people come up to speed there. So if you feel like you're a little rusty in your trig, if you feel like you kind of know what they are, but you should know them a little bit better, then please do yourself a favor and study your trig. You can do that with a book. You can do that with a DVD. It doesn't matter, but make sure it's done. So in this section, we're going to start to introduce and integrate trigonometry into calculus. And what you're going to find from here on out through the rest of calculus, one, two, three, differential equations and every math course beyond it, trig is going to be everywhere. And what I mean by the trigonometric functions, they are mainly the six functions that we learn about. Sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. Those are the six. And uh, the way I'm going to do this here is I'm really going to write the derivatives down of all six of these guys. And then we're going to do a series of problems to kind of show you how to use that knowledge to take derivatives of more complicated functions. So let's go ahead and do that right now. The um, six main trigonometric functions, like we've said, is, uh, for instance, sine. All right. So I'm going to take the derivative of sine. I'm going to write this down in a different color. I think it'll be easier. The derivative of sine, and let me actually be a little bit more clear. When I say the derivative of sine, I'm talking about sine of x. Or it could be sine of theta. A lot of times you take physics and you're talking about real angles. You talk about theta. Theta is just a variable. It's just like x or y or t or anything. So don't worry about what's here, but just know that you're taking the sine of something. If you take the derivative of sine, then what you're going to get back is the cosine function. So the derivative of the sine is the cosine function. And in the Calculus 1 tutor, sort of the companion to this disk, I actually graph the sine function and graph the cosine function and show you that the cosine function is really just a shifted version of the sine function. In fact, sine and cosine, they look the same. They have the same exact shape. It's just that cosine is shifted a little bit with respect to sine. So that if you were to look at the sine function and figure out the places where it is most steep, which means its derivative is greatest, the, the fastest part of the sine function is going to line up exactly where the cosine function has a maximum. That's why it's, it is the derivative, because it describes the slope of the sine function everywhere. All right. So there's more of a discussion on that in the uh, other Calculus 1 tutor. But for the, for the purpose of this DVD, we're really concerned about getting good at taking derivatives. So the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine negative sine of x, right? So it's not the sine, it's the negative of it. So it's, it's a slightly modified version of sine, but if you plot this and you plot its derivative, you would find out that it would be exactly equal to negative sine. Let me go ahead and write the rest of these guys down. We'll have tangent. We'll have, let me make sure I put the x here. 